I guess I've arrived at the grim reality of the Varroa mite being on the border. Uh, another thing we have to do, <laughs> we're checking our bees every month now, for goodness sakes, oh my lord. I'm worn out thinking about it, but it doesn't matter. We've got to get ourselves some version of this. I just bought this online, this is an easy check one. I'm not necessarily sponsored by them, but if Easy Check would like to sponsor me, why don't you send me 10 of these and we could give them out as a prize. And you never know, we could spread the love. Anyway, it's a grim reality down here in Oz. We've got to come along with our jolly checker box for our mites. Well, time for a brood check. I've got our extra implements now, and other than just my eyes and a jolly test kit. Now I've got to bring me metho and me pot and me jolly mite catcher up machine. It says it's an easy check, which is never any good. It's like easy to assemble. That always scares the crap out of me when something says easy. Now, what does it reckon? It's got required stuff. You need some rubbing alcohol, which is, we're gonna call it metho. Windscreen washer fluid, maybe. No windscreen washer fluid. You could use either of those things. Fill up the pot. Mate, that's the other thing we forgot was a small cup, but anyway, we'll have a crack at it. Because you're meant to get 300 bees so you can work out your calculations. But some, maybe that yellow bit would work. We'll try that. What else are we meant to do? Enables bees to do something. One minute agitation. Where the fuck, I don't know, large. Right, so that's got that way around for the alcohol and then you go around there. So I'm tipping, I'm tipping you have the alcohol in the pot and you stick the bees in your lid and then you stick them in the alcohol. How's that for a plan? But, can John read? I can't read for shit. Ah, that's a trick. So with the alcohol, it's in the basket, and with the sugar shaking, it's out of the basket. I reckon. Cool. Yes, that makes sense, because then you can see them down the bottom. Right, and it reckons you want to half fill your container. So we're gonna do that. I think this is the catching bucket. We're gonna put some metho in the container. I'm gonna go with easy check is gonna be our measurement stick. Does right. that look half or not quite? Mm -hmm. Woo! Now the theory I'm working on, I've heard several different ideas, but my theory is you're actually meant gonna shake some brood frame bees into here, and then if there's any flying worker bees, they'll bugger off after a little while, and then we'll make sure the queen's not in there. We will check the frame before we shake the bees in this box. But just to double check that we don't, because I'm tipping, if we put the queen in here and roll her through some metho, it's not gonna be advantageous for her. We're gonna do that. And then the other idea I've heard from people is that you just get your basket and just run it down the brood, the actual brood frame and catch the bees that way. But I'm gonna try a few different items because I'm new at this business. For all you people that have been doing this for 20 years, take pity on me, because this is just happening now. And we'll have a look in the top and see what they're doing. Wait. Cool, so they half filled that up, which is good. Oh. I wonder if I stick that out the front. I'm reasonably confident after I've done this several times, I'll come up with my own method, but you've got to start somewhere. So I'm gonna run with the instruction given to me by people that have done this before. Right, so we'll just get the second of the outside frame, which is usually the best one to take anyway. I'm probably gonna to have to start bringing my frame hanger upper because this is gonna be ongoing a bit more than usual. Here's a nice bit of brood in the corner. Look at that. So we'll just shake our girls off of that. And sit that over on our top of our other brood box. Now that we've upset them, we'll give them a bit more smoke. What you're trying to find is where, where most of the brood is. So then the little work, like the actual fresh brood, so then you've got the nurse bees running them up. It all looks fairly much like cat brew to me. Just pop that one back in there because I reckon you want to get towards the middle of the box. You've got to check your brood anyway. So you're doing a bit of everything. Don't? One thing I think everybody's going to have to make sure of is, yes, we're going to be monitoring for mites, but we've still got to monitor for every other thing that we've already been monitoring for. So don't forget about your foul broods because all your jolly moths, all your hive beetles and all of those things. So all of that stuff's still going to be important. What is it? Don't get totally distracted. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Hey, looking happy enough. Looking happy enough. Wow, we'll just double check we haven't got any queen cells. 
Now, yeah, I can't see the queen at the minute. So I think this frame we're going to shake into the box. From what I can figure out, you want to have where the new brood is, because that's where your nurse bees are going to be. So we'll do that off of a few frames. Sorry, a bit silly. Where are you, boss woman? Are you on here? Hopefully not. And we'll just move everybody back where they belong. All the bees figure out what they're doing. Now, yeah. go. Cool. So we've got our metho, we've got our little scooping up bucket. The theory is, from what I can gather, is by this stage your worker bees have buggered off. You should mostly have nurse bees in here, which is where the varroa mites were most likely to be. So this method, you get to double check you haven't got the queen and you get more majority of nurse bees. As I say, I'm a newbie, but this is the plan. <laughs> I'm sure we're all going to get awful experience of this real quick. Hopefully we don't find any mites, otherwise that'll really suck. We'll just double check that there's nobody in here that's important that I can see. They all look like nice little nurse bees to me. So we'll just shake them off the top, give them a bit of a rattle so the workers bugger off. We'll just take our lid off and we'll get our scoop of bees. Like that. Sorry ladies, it's in your best interest of the, of the home in general, but you're not going to see another day, I'm terribly sorry. Mm -hmm. Up our lid so we don't get methyl all over ourselves. Mm -hmm. Lucky for me, there's no little black dots in there. So as that's sitting there, figuring itself out, we'll just put our bees back together. And I'm sure they're not really impressed with this project. I'm not sure there's no other, well, there is another way you can do this is with a sugar shake, but it's not as effective as the alcohol wash. So with a sugar shake, you're already gonna know you've got mites and you're just monitoring. So I think until we get to that point, we really do have to do it this way. So is that this is a lot more accurate. Cause heck, if you find one mite, then you should ring them. Well, I think at this point you're meant to ring the department and everybody will have a freak out if you're in South Australia, but whoo, <laughs> one excitement at a time. Let's put them back together, shall we? This is another advantage, I would say, because you can run beehives without a queen excluder, but another really good reason to have a queen excluder is you keep the honey separate and you've only got 10 brood frames to check and not 20, because the, they'll lay up in the brood box as well. They'll lay up in the second super as well. But I'm sure there's lots of debate about queen excluders, no queen excluders and all the rest of it, but either way, I guess if they're in a the gum tree, they haven't got a queen excluder. Uh, like that. Look at that. We have got some dots in the bottom, but they're bees. <laughs> so as messed up as that seems to be actually killing 300 of your bees. And I know there's a lot of people out there that get quite excited about me crashing one under a lid, but <laughs> this is the grim reality of these jolly little mites. If you don't monitor them, and you don't bloody know when to treat, you're not gonna have a beehive come summer. If you get through the winter, they'll just get annihilated apparently. So this is the grim reality of beekeeping coming forward. But you know what? What do I say? Might be good, might be shit. And if we don't get any mites for a little while, that'll be good. As soon as we get some mites, that'll be shit. But anyway, it is what it is. Well, there you go. Varroa mite check. Luckily no check, so it's all good. It's not checkmate just yet for this bee box anyway. Now we've got to go on and keep it all happening. So don't forget to click like, subscribe, share with your friends. Heck, let's share the love of beekeeping. If you'd like to support us with a bit of economic ability, join us in the brood box. You never know what you're gonna find out in there. I tell you what, that's a wonderful place. Hopefully we don't find any mites in there in the immediate future, but it's a good place to talk about the little brutes. And don't forget to join us Thursday morning, coming up really soon. We're gonna have Randy Oliver, the man of the moment. I tell you what, he'd have to be the blooming bee mite king. Varroa mites are us, he could have on his thing, because he's been researching for longer than I've been beekeeping. <sighs> My goodness. I have enough trouble when it's only the jolly smoker and a hive tool to remember. Now I've got pots and vinegar and everything. Gosh, I nearly left my hive tool behind.